everybody. Let me start with a note about inductors and capacitors. When you try the problems in the book, really, you, re you only know a few formulas, right? For a capacitor, the displacement current is proportional to the time derivative of the voltage. For an inductor, the voltage is proportional to the time derivative of the current. And then you know things like power is voltage times current. And then for an inductor, power is voltage times current. And then if you want energy, power is the time derivative of energy, like this. So then let's go like this, integrate both sides. So the energy is 1 half CV squared. Same for an inductor. Power is time derivative of energy. Let's go like this, integrate both sides. Energy is 1 half Li squared. And really, you'll just see a bunch of calculus problems. Now, when you're learning calculus, it's important that you know how to solve math problems by hand using techniques like integration by parts, which is what you'll see a lot for these. But let's see, to be fair, if you already know how to do it, I think it's fair game that you use a table of integrals like this. So you set up your problem and then look for the solution in this table of integrals. That's totally fair, I think. Okay, so now let's talk about what happens when you start putting inductors and capacitors together in series or in parallel. So let's start with inductors. So let's say you take an inductor and put it in series with another inductor, series with another one. What is the equivalent inductance? So right, just like how we were doing with resistors, let's say you have L L1, L2, L3. What is the equivalent of having all of these in series? So we know that for sure, these all have the same current. Right, for sure. But what about the voltage? The voltage here, I'll call it V1, V2, V3. And then this is the equivalent voltage. So the equivalent voltage would be you add up these voltages in series. Okay, now what's the voltage for an inductor? L, Di, dt. Right, so for inductor number two, L2, di, dt. L3, di, dt. For the equivalent right here, what's the voltage? L equivalent, di, dt. And we just said earlier, these are definitely all the same current. So what's left? So, right, these are all the same non-zero current, let's cross them out. So what's left? The equivalent inductance, like this, and however many you have, like if you have a bunch of them. Okay, so series inductance, you just add them together, just like resistors, right? Like if you have a five millihenry resistor and you put another one in series, then you have 10, that's it. Okay, what happens if you put them in parallel, etc. however many you have, right? Now, for sure, these are in parallel, so they definitely all have the same voltage, right? Because this node is, is common to all three of these. This one is common to all three of these. So definitely the same voltage. What is the equivalent inductance? Well, this current, I'll call I1, I2, I3, and this equivalent current over here, 
right? These are in parallel, so we use KCL. I equivalent is I1 plus I2 plus however many you have, right? Now what's the current? We know that the voltage looks like this, but we want the current. How do we get the current? Let's move DT on the other side. Well, let's move L over here. And then let's move DT on that side over. DT. So then it looks like this. Now let's integrate from, let's say, T equals zero. So I at T equals zero to some other oh, T, some I, right? So we have I minus I at T zero equals one over L integral V DT. Okay, so I one really is I one, which is all this, right? So one over L integral V DT plus this I one at T equals zero. So this is I one. Now I two plus one over L two, I've got to label L one, integral V DT plus I two at T equals zero, et cetera, for however many inductors you have. And equivalent, one over L equivalent, integral of V DT plus I equivalent at T equals to zero. Okay, and we already said they all have the same voltage. So that, those cancel out. And then here, look, you have I equivalent at T0, I1 at T0, I2 at T0. So this equals this plus this plus all of them, which means you can cancel those out as well. So all that's left is one over L equivalent, one over L1, one over L2, etc. Right, and that looks exactly like when we had resistors in parallel. Okay, now let's go to capacitors. So let's say you had a bunch of capacitors in series. Okay, they definitely all have the same current. They're in series, but then the voltages would be different. We would label them separately at least. And here's the equivalent capacitance and the equivalent voltage. So KVL, right? So this equivalent is V1 plus V2 plus V3, etc. however many. Now, what is the voltage? Um, I don't know. I know that the current is C dV dt. So what's the voltage? Let's move C on this side and then move T, dt on this side. Then it looks like this. And then integrate from T equal to, let's call it T naught to T, and then some V at T naught to V. So what do we have here? V minus this equals, I'll move it on this side of the equation, plus one over C integral I dt. Okay, so V equivalent is V equivalent at T initial plus one over C integral I dt. V1 is V1 at t equal to zero plus one over C I dt, right? So it's starting to look like what we just did with inductors. V2 would be V2 at T initial plus one over C integral I dt, etc. And then again, 
these are, oops, I didn't label this. This should be C equivalent, C1, C2. This is the same as this is the same as this. This equals this plus this plus all the rest of them. So we can cancel that. So what's left? 1 over C equivalent equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3, etc. Okay, so capacitors in series are like this. Okay, and note the difference. Inductors in series look like this, add them together. Inductors in parallel is this one. Capacitors in series looks like this. Capacitors in parallel, what does that look like? Right, so if these are all in parallel, they definitely all have the same voltage. So what's the equivalent capacitance? Definitely the same voltage. But what about the current? If I call this I1, I2, I3, I equivalent. So then I equivalent is I1 plus I2 plus however many. What is the current? C, dV, dt. For capacitor 1, C1, dV, dt. For capacitor 2, C2, dV, dt, etc. And we already said they all have the same voltage, so these are all the same. What's left? C equivalent equals C1 plus C2 plus etc. So capacitors in parallel just add like this. Okay, so remember all this and just keep on practicing using these. Then if you have any questions, let me know in the forum and I'll see you in the next video.